Hello lovelies and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's video. My name's Ayla and I'm so glad that you stopped by. So today's a little bit of a different wrap up than usual and it'll probably go up a little bit late um, considering all the footage I have to get through. But today is really special. We're going to be finally revealing the kitchen. So I spoke a little while ago on this channel about a charity that I'm heavily involved in, I'm a director of, and we've been renovating the kitchen what feels like forever and I am finally ready to share with you how it's come along. Um, still not 100% complete, but complete enough to be ready to use next week. So I'm really, really happy to share it with you guys. I'm really proud to share it with you guys. And seeing as this is a wrap up, we're also doing three different tickles, including this one today. Um, just as we talk about everything that's going on at Super. I quickly also mention that this eye look, really special. I've got a brand new set of fun that I was having today making this look so i can't wait to share that with you as well at the weekend i'll document the process of how this place went from all this Here we are, finally progressing to the next phase. It's really exciting. All of the horribleness has been removed. I've got a nice clear slate to start again, the way we need it, the way we want it to code um, and to be operational. It doesn't look like much has changed, but this has been one of the biggest steps and we finally got a chance to make it. I'm just showing you the next stage of progress. No more pipes, a few more holes. I guess it's like anything, it gets worse before it gets better. So today we're moving everything over into the new place. It's almost ready. It's really getting really exciting. So lots of stock taking to do today, but I am really, really excited to show you guys the actual kitchen and the progress that's going through today. Very excited and really looking forward to actually moving in properly and starting some cooking in here. To this. hoping that in the next week or so the final little moves of things like this bench will get moved over to where this bench is and we'll have access to the storage space up there you know little bits and pieces finishing touches um, before opening but yeah pretty much ready to go comparing to how it was at the beginning it's pretty pretty exciting stuff had to get a lot of things replaced um, just because they were not usable but then we were able to salvage a few bits and pieces as well um, and of course a few things we already had purchased previously with all of our hamper storage so beautifully freshly cleaned fridges. 
So story time, six, seven years ago, we were sitting in a sukkah, which is an sort of like a tent type thing um, where we have some food for about a week in the year for the festival of Sukkot. And we were talking with some friends about starting a kind of like a Shabbaton, so sort of like social events, dinners, um, you know, to make sure that the community stays together, that people feel welcome, and, you know, taking some of the taboo away from religious events. So here we are talking about it. I love the idea straight away, I have to admit. I thought it was fantastic. I had a very small, now six-year-old, so yeah, it would have been six years ago, now six-and-a-half-year-old at the time. Um, and, yeah, anyway, we since then have held many events and uh, were very successful with it. It was very popular. But... The problem every time was fundraising, where to cook, coordination. It was like reinventing the wheel every single time. And, you know, the other thing that came of it is that we realized very quickly that people didn't necessarily need events. They needed a constant source of support, a lot of these people that were coming, especially those that were having subsidized tickets. You know, they weren't really able to pay and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, kosher food, it's not the easiest to come by. So all these things, even in Melbourne where we have a lot of uh, supply of it, we don't necessarily always have a clarity on it and we don't always have the funds for it because it is a little bit more expensive. So, you know, all these wonderful issues. <laughs> um, and very, very quickly we realized, or one of the partners realized that we need a soup kitchen. We need to be able to provide meals for the vulnerable, but also a manner of which to support people who would like to access a certain type of food, but maybe can't do it at the current financial constraint. So Super Kitchen was born two years ago as a result, and it was going very, very well with monthly cook-offs and distributing hampers and all the wonderful things that we were able to achieve very quickly. But then we, again, were reinventing the wheel. Even though we found a steady location to cook at a, a local synagogue, it was fantastic. They were just wonderful. So sometimes we would come up against a few issues about sharing the space, like we didn't have the same equipment every time at our disposal, or we didn't have the um, accessibility that we needed, or you had to set everything up at 9 o'clock that morning because that was the earliest convenience to have access. So there were definitely things that were preventing us from being bigger. Even storage was a really huge issue. Like sometimes we would only be able to get products, say, on a Wednesday and we weren't cooking till Sunday. In that case, fantastic. Usually you can freeze most things or you can store most things, but that's assuming you have somewhere to do so. So again, because of the rate of growth and because of the you know, constant craziness we kept finding ourselves in, no matter how organized we got ourselves, something to put a spanner in the works, we very quickly realized that we wanted our own kitchen. The other thing that having our own kitchen was going to be able to give us was the opportunity to prefabricate things for sale. For example, pastries or, you know, soups or whatever for sale. So we didn't have to wait till they were going to be freely distributed. People could even come and perhaps purchase at a more competitive rate um, and have access to that sort of food source, um, you know, cooked at our premises. Again, this was going to be a really big issue considering we were limited with our access already. And, you know, we didn't want to exactly step on the toes of other people already using the space we were in. Um, so, again, our own space, our own space, our own kitchen. And the demand in 2020 especially grew so many times because of COVID. So many more people became vulnerable with their food security. So many more people reached out to us. And it happened at such a crazy rate. I mean, we went from 40-odd families back in March and we are now three over 300 households. It's insane. Some of these people are single pensioners, you know, war veterans, um, you know, smaller kind of needs. And some of them are families with, say, single parents or otherwise with absolutely no job security now after COVID. Things like that. The, you know, the variation of the people we support is very, very vast. But definitely the requirements, the request for support has grown considerably. And not only has it shaken us on a on one level, but it's also presented to us the, the need of the people we're supporting for us to have our own space and no longer just something that we think we require. So we found a premises. It's in a fantastic location right in the heart of where we're operating from. Absolutely brilliant. And there's all things with us 
again, the opportunities grew. People started reaching out to us. Different organizations started reaching out to us. And the realization came along that that space that we have now acquired has to be so very flexible. The other thing that grew from this is that the kitchen that was already there was beyond repair, which was not necessarily what we believed moving into the space. So we took on a massive renovation. So the next phase is to just move a few benches around, um, fix up a few little bits and bobs. This coming Tuesday, we're going to be nice and ready. We've got everything booked in to be nice and ready for a bit like a soft opening on Wednesday. We can already start using the facilities, can't start using the space yet, but we can start using at least the kitchen facilities. Um, so it's all coming to an absolute final touches kind of phase. Um, and yeah, I'm just so excited that I decided that I'm going to be sharing this with you this week because um, even though it's not completely 100% ready, it's 99.9% there. And it's one of those spaces that will never stay the same. It's going to be forever growing with us. So there's no point to wait till it's at its final point because I don't think it will ever get to a final point. Thank goodness. Um, we're going to keep growing and keep listening to the needs of the community and keep allowing people to reach out to us and seeing how we can support them, not just with food stability, but all kinds of different food related and socially related aspects. As I mentioned, many different organizations reached out to us and one of those organizations based here in Melbourne is called Access Inc. And that is where people with disabilities are able to train in a culinary space, whether they're baristas or chefs or whatever the case, um, you know, any kind of hospitality type training. And we are going to be able to facilitate them because we were renovating the space. We were able to be accessibility friendly and help them have a new space in which they can train and even potentially we could hire some of these people and give them real on-the-job experience too. It wasn't easy. None of this journey has been anywhere near easy. Um, new, definitely a million new skills a day learned. Um, you know, I've never project managed before. I've never been anyone's director or so to speak boss before. Um, not that that's how we structured our business. We're all very much family kind of structure you know you just have the parents if you like um, and then you know all the rest of the people who are running the show with us it's very much based out of dignity and out of community spirit and out of the idea that there's nothing more rewarding than giving and if you're able to spread that joy a little further a little wider to a wider base to a wider set of recipients it's all the more enjoyable to me, this is an exceptionally selfish position. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I come there just to socialize. Goodness no. It's a lot of work, but it's so, so, so enjoyable because you straight away reap the reward of the thanks, the joy of people who are receiving, the security you're providing, and even the fact that some of these people are just lonely and isolated and giving them that little bit of connection is wonderful. So super stands by our motto of support, nourish and inspire. Not only are we able to have a dining experience, to run a soup kitchen, to have social events, hopefully with COVID a little bit more under control in Melbourne, um, give elderly people the opportunity of having a bit of a change of scenery and an outing, um, potentially having kids that are a little bit vulnerable, the opportunity to do cooking classes so they aren't living on fast food or prepackaged snacks that they can actually cook for themselves based on the ingredients that parents can provide especially that people are becoming more and more time poor and having a having to have career changes due to COVID. The space allows us to be as wide and as flexible as we want to be um, and we're just so so blessed to be able to undertake this project. Even though this project has always been something that we've kind of reacted to. The wonderful thing that I have to mention that's come out of this is the wonderful people we've met and welcomed into the family. The wonderful opportunity of, you know, you meet people because of their skill set or because their eagerness to help, but then they stick around and become one of the gang, one of the mishpucha, the family, which has been an amazing experience in of itself. You know, especially with kids, seeing other kids and learning what it is not only that mum's always busy doing something for other families, but many mums and many dads are involved. And how can the kids help? And then the kids get a sense of philanthropy. They get a sense of charity. They get a sense of community um, and togetherness and what it's like to be a little bit privileged. I've spoken on this channel in the past about the fact that we don't have much. We really don't. But 
what we do have is really fantastic friends and amazing family. Some of these friends have become family um, and many of the family are friends. So with, with that, we're extremely filthy rich and it's just so beautiful and special to be able to share that with the greater community and show the kids how easy it is. You might not have the coolest gadgets or you might not have the most expensive cut of meat at, at Friday night dinner but you will have the biggest heart and are, able, and are able to give out the warmest cuddles and share whatever you have, no matter how much or how valuable in a money sense that is. It could be just so cherished by the recipient. Sometimes a smile is the greatest gift you can give. And I'm hoping that our kids are seeing that and are learning to appreciate the value of the simple things in life like kindness. Okay, guys, I know this is a very different video today, but I hope you liked the three tickle looks. I hope you um, liked the kitchen because we're very, very proud of where it came from to where it's come to. Um, and we're looking forward to growing and looking forward to being everything that we can possibly be, um, everything that we can be without overstretching. It's an exciting time. There's a lot of change, a lot of growth, and a lot of learning, as I mentioned. Um, so, yeah, wish us luck. <laughs> Please do like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave me comments below if you have any questions or anything at all to say about this video. I'm happy to answer them. Please do subscribe for more tickle videos, makeup reviews, eye tutorials, eye health talks, um, all kinds of things related to health and beauty and now philanthropy. <laughs> for more things, head over to Instagram. Definitely more daily reminders over there. And I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye.